That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we have had a lot of people coming out and asking us for an NFL mock draft. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do exactly what you want. We're not going to do a full NFL mock draft here simply because I think I have a couple specialties. And that is mainly centered around fantasy football. I mean, you know, that's my number one go-to. I've been spending months on months on months looking at these receivers, looking at these running backs. So instead, I'm going to do a mock draft specifically for these positions so I can dive in depth on the landing spot, the player themselves, and the fit and the offense. We are just going to be focusing in on the wide receiver position in this video, trying to go through, map out how the first three or so rounds are going to go in this year's NFL draft. But of course, if you have not done so already, please go down there, drop a like on this video, leave a comment if you think that I say something stupid in this stream, because I probably am going to, and subscribe to the channel only if you play fantasy football. If you don't play fantasy football, I'm sorry, this video really isn't going to be for you. And if you want to get in to some fantasy leagues this offseason, I know we are a long ways away from the season actually starting, but you can get into leagues today real money fantasy drafts where you don't have to submit your starting lineup during the year. You don't have to work on the waivers. You just draft and let it ride out on underdog fantasy. Please go sign up with promo code flock. When you sign up to underdog fantasy with promo code flock, you will actually get our in-depth dynasty research book to help you out in your fantasy leagues. And on top of that, you will get our 2022 rankings, our 2022 dynasty rankings, our 2022 rookie rankings, all with promo code flock on underdog fantasy. You can get into some drafts with us on the live stream as well. The link will be down in the description, but that should be it. Let's go through and let's dive into this. And my prediction for the first wide receiver off the board in this year's draft is going to be someone that has never been the wide receiver one in his college offense. We're going Garrett Wilson here out of Ohio State, going to the Atlanta Falcons at pick eight. Now, I know a lot of people are assuming that Garrett Wilson's going to make it to Washington. I am looking at this Atlanta Falcons roster and saying, you know what? They simply have nobody. Of course, they have a very bad quarterback situation as well. We can't overlook that. But to see this overall core centered around Kyle Pitts and Cordell Patterson, they need to add weapons. I think the Atlanta Falcons possibly have the largest hole at the wide receiver position that we are going to see. Lost Julio Jones last offseason, losing Calvin Ridley this year, and Russell Gage is gone. Your top three wide receivers just split. You didn't invest in anybody last year outside of Kyle Pitts, who will be an elite level tight end, of course, but this team desperately needs a receiver before they even solve the quarterback situation. So going and getting Garrett Wilson at pick eight, I think is going to make a lot of sense with Garrett Wilson. While yes, he was never the wide receiver one on his own offense. He faced the toughest target competition that you could possibly have in college football. His sophomore year at Ohio State, he was fantastic. He actually accounted for about 34% of the receiving offense on a per game basis on a roster that had Jameson Williams, who we'll talk about a little bit later on, Chris Olave, who we'll talk about a little bit later on, both receivers pretty much guaranteed to be around one prospects. And also his junior season, this is why he took a step back. You have the best wide receiver prospect since pretty much Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase, of course, was up there. One of the best receiving prospects that you will ever see was on that Ohio State roster. So yes, it ended up pushing Garrett Wilson down just slightly, but this is someone that will be very exciting at the next level. I think it's a high floor and ceiling combination. But let's go over to our next player. From a fantasy football perspective, this is my wide receiver one in the class. Now, I will say, of course, if he lands in this spot, it's not going to be pretty. And I know both these spots are disgusting. But we're going to go Drake London, headed over to the Houston Texans to try to fill the DeAndre Hopkins role. Of course, he's not DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, he'll never be able to fill that large hole. But a big thing with this Houston Texans offense is it's very similar to Atlanta. You really have no core pieces here. Now, I understand you have Brandon Cooks on the team, but Brandon Cooks has one year left on his contract, and I believe it's like $16 million against the books. I wouldn't even be surprised if Brandon Cooks 
is traded away from Houston. If we're looking at their long-term options at the position, you have Nico Collins out of Michigan last year. Yeah, Nico Collins flashes a rookie, but definitely not a top-end prospect. You cannot plan on having Nico Collins as your wide receiver one going forward. This wouldn't be a great spot for Drake London, of course, because you have an uncertain quarterback situation. I know a lot of people love Davis Mills. I'm telling you here, Davis Mills is not the guy, but we can clearly see that the Houston Texans are in line to just go out there, say, hell, you know what? Yeah, we're not winning this year. Uh, we just traded away Deshaun Watson for three future first round picks. Let's use this pick at 13. Let's take Drake London. Let's plan on just completely tanking this year. Let's bring in possibly Bryce Young. Let's bring in CJ Stroud. Let's go get the quarterback one in the 2023 draft class with the first or second overall selection. And then all of a sudden, of course, the situation for Drake London would be significantly better. But I think Drake London makes a lot of sense here to the Texans. I know not many wide receivers are getting mocked to these two spots. I just don't see how you're a general manager for these teams and especially looking at the wide receiver free agent market right now, seeing how much money Christian Kirk is getting paid how are you going to address the position unless you start taking those guys in the NFL draft? This is the draft to do. So I think we go Garrett Wilson, pick eight to the Falcons, Drake London, pick 13 to the Texans. And then our third receiver from a fantasy football perspective, he's lower on this list for me, but we're going Jamison Williams, pick 18 to the New Orleans Saints. A lot of people think that you are going to have Chris Alave at this selection. Trust me, I love me some Chris Alave. If we're looking at the two receivers, Chris Alave actually outproduced Jamison Williams drastically when they were on that same team. Jamison Williams wasn't able to get on the field until he went to Alabama. Now, there are a couple things working against Jamison Williams here. A, most importantly, the timing of his ACL tear. The national championship game. The worst time that can possibly happen. Because if we just look at a nine-month timetable, I mean, and that's something we should be assuming because pretty much every ACL tear is at least nine months. He's not making it to rookie mini camp. He's not making it to training camp. He's probably not making it to the preseason. Probably going to miss a couple games at the beginning of the year as well. Now, of course, you can go through and you can find your examples of Odell Beckham Jr. in 2014 that were able to overcome missing all that. But what I'm worried about is the Rashad Bateman situation where Rashad Bateman has the groin injury. Of course, last year, get the groin injury. And then all of a sudden it's very hard for you to get implemented into the offense right away, your rookie year. And it's really hard for NFL talent evaluators to go out there and check you out. They're pretty much exclusively relying on the film. Now, James Williams, why he is going to go higher, in my opinion, than these guys like Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, George Pickens, is just because Williams is probably the fastest wide receiver in this draft class. And we know that teams Need that speed to be able to stretch the defense, to be able to draw that safety attention. And here, the New Orleans Saints clearly need that when you have Michael Thomas operating underneath. I think it would be a natural fit in this offense. Now going over to the wide receiver that I prefer from a fantasy football perspective, but we're not playing fantasy here. We're just going NFL mock draft in this. We're going to go Chris Alave, pick 19 to the Philadelphia Eagles to play alongside Devontae Smith. Now, here with Chris Olave, I, I would hate the landing spot from his production standpoint, but it would make so much sense for the Philadelphia Eagles. And the reason I'm assuming that you're going to have Olave falling here to 19 is because I think a lot of these teams are going to be looking at Chris Olave, James Williams in a similar light. And if we look at the Philadelphia Eagles, they have picked 15, pick 16, then the Chargers pick 17. I don't think they really have to worry about the Chargers going with the receiver and then Saints pick 18 and they can go. They can take their choice of Williams. They can take their choice of Olave and leave the Philadelphia Eagles with either wide receiver making it back to him. This is a team that clearly needs to just continue to invest into the position, especially if they want to give Jalen Hurts his best chance to succeed. Chris Olave, I really like the player. Sucks that he stayed all four years and definitely lowered his draft capital. If he would have come out last year, his profile would have looked so much better before turning into the wide receiver three at Ohio State. But still, his junior and sophomore years were fantastic. Now, let's start to get to some of the exciting landing spots. And this is something that I have no idea how we're going to adjust to from a fantasy football perspective. It's going to probably give me the biggest mind grain draft night because it will be so hard to evaluate these players for their rookie seasons. But Traylon Burks, pick 22 Green Bay Packers. I love Traylon Burks at one point this offseason. He was my wide receiver one, but this is about to be the range where you have the great 
great offenses like the Packers, like the Chiefs, having a ton of picks and needing wide receiver help. I mean, you even have the Dallas Cowboys here that could potentially go out there and fill in the hole from Amari Cooper. But here we're going to have Traylon Burks. He's not making it past the Green Bay Packers. I would be unbelievably surprised. Now, there are concerns with Traylon Burks. He didn't run a full route tree at Arkansas, but we've seen DK Metcalf before coming out of an SEC school, not running a full route tree, then all of a sudden finding a lot of success at the next level. I don't necessarily think that you need to just demonstrate the ability to run every single route in college if we have seen the production. And that's what Traylon Burks has. He accounted for over 45% of the receiving yards on a per game basis his final year at Arkansas. Arkansas. He broke out his second season. He has the size. Now, the reason the size is the important part is this team needs an alpha X wide receiver. With the departure of Devontae Adams, the departure of Marquez Valdez Scantling, they have a couple holes. We'll possibly get to another wide receiver. The Green Bay Packers could be taken a little bit later in the second round. But I think Traylon Burks, pick 22, would be an actual pick for this team. Now, going to pick 30, the Kansas City Chiefs are here. They have pick 29, they have pick 30. Now, clearly the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be in the market to trade up because I think once you have Traylon Burks off the board, once you have those top five receivers off the board from an NFL draft perspective, that's when you get the teardrop. From a fantasy perspective, I'm more excited about Wilson, Drake, London, and Burks, but it is what it is. Now, I have no idea where they could go. Possibly they look at the Philadelphia Eagles at pick 19, pick 16. They try to make a swap there. Possibly they look to the Baltimore Ravens, the Minnesota Vikings. There are a couple different options that they could have to move up to the middle of the first round. But if they were to stay here, I think they're going to have to just eat it and reach on a receiver. Because if you look at the teams at the beginning of round two, a couple of these rosters as well have a hole at the wide receiver position. I think we saw this with teams in free agency going out there and overpaying for these options, going out there overpaying for Christian Kirk, arguably overpaying for players like DJ Chark because so many rosters right now have hole at wide receiver that despite there being a massive teardrop off here for the Kansas City Chiefs, when they know they need one, they're probably just gonna have to bite the bullet and take them anyway. And here, I know a lot of people have said Christian Watson. I know a lot of people have said George Piggins. I don't know. I'm going to throw my hands up in the air. George Piggins, pick 30, Kansas City Chiefs. We've seen this team go out there and get excited about a former Georgia wide receiver in McCole Hardman, but I know that's not necessarily exactly why we should expect them to take George Piggins. I think the reason we should expect them to take George Piggins is he is what they need. He is one of the very few wide receivers in this draft class that does not need to be placed into a particular role in this offense. He can play in the slot. He can play on the outside. And we know that you have receivers in this offense that are designed for their exact roles. You have Juju to operate underneath. You have Marquez Valdez Scantling to be the field stretching option. We need someone that can play on the boundaries. I think George Pickens does have that. Now, of course, the issue with Pickens is coming off the injury. We didn't really get to see the production his junior season. So he's definitely more of an unknown player compared to what you would have with a couple of these options like Chris Olave. Like we know who Chris Olave is. George Pickens, he has one of the highest ceilings in this draft class based on him breaking out at 18 years old at Georgia, getting on the field right away, accounting for over 25% of that passing offense. At Georgia, that is a fantastic feature that you really never see from wide receivers there. So it's exciting to see George Pickens. It's exciting to see his athleticism, his size, that early career breakout. However, we never saw complete dominance, but that was because most likely the injury was holding him back. It's tough, but we are going to have Christian Watson going almost directly after this. We're going to have Christian Watson going to the New York Jets pick 35. Now here with the Jets, it would make a lot of sense to have a big bodied wide receiver with speed on the outside we need to see that continued trend for these teams with those young quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts, like Zach Wilson, to continue to invest in their wide receivers. We just saw this in Miami with them going and trading for Tyree Kill to make sure, hey Tua, just so you know, we're giving you every weapon possible. So if you fail, you're just not the guy. You're getting shipped out of here. I think we're going to see something very similar with the New York Jets. I think they're going to make every attempt to just say, hey, Zach Wilson, um, you have no excuses. This is your year to prove that you're our guy. If not, we may have to look for a different solution. Christian Watson would play on the outside. You have Elijah Moore sliding in to be a little bit more of the slot wide receiver. Christian Watson, obviously, that bigger bodied 
But I think he's a player that provides athleticism as well to this offense, which already has some fast pieces like Elijah Moore. Now, going over to our next wide receiver, I actually really like him from a fantasy football perspective. I don't know if he's going to be as valued by the actual NFL draft. It's going to be Jahan Dotson. And now here with Dotson, I'm going to have him going to the Indianapolis Colts at pick 42. This is a wide receiver that, yes, stayed all four years at Penn State. So that's definitely a red flag that we need to address. But the reason he had to stay there is he had a late career breakout based on the combination of KJ Hamler, a wide receiver that got selected in the second round of the 2020 draft that I love and Pat Frymuth. They were both at Penn State, keeping Dotson back from really having that breakout until his junior season. It is what it is. I I think we can overlook it based on the context of the situation he was placed in, especially when you had those players leaving and Dotson all of a sudden, I mean, was dominant at Penn State. Looks to be a little bit of a Tyler Lockett type player, just a little bit slower than Tyler Lockett. If Dotson went out there and he had the same 40 yard dash time as what we've seen with elite speed players previously, I think you could see Dotson go closer to the Jameson William range. But the issue is he's just going to be a slower version of that. I think the Indianapolis Colts though would be a good fit because you have a little bit of a speedy receiver here with Dotson combined with the size that you get from Michael Pittman. And this team desperately needs to upgrade over Zach Pascal. Now, going over to a team that a lot of people think are going to go receiver round one, but I just think Garrett Wilson's not going to make it to him. I think we're going to have the Atlanta Falcons here in the second round with pick 47 going and taking Sky Moore. And now with Sky Moore, 100% a winner this offseason, going to the NFL Combine, showing that he is an above average athlete overall with his athletic profile, that he can operate further downfield. I think that's going to be a great for Sky Moore in his draft prospects. And what we have been seeing lately, if you pull up grinding the mocks, if you pull up NFL mock draft database to see where a lot of mock drafters are having him. Sky Moore continuously is rising up draft boards where now he looks like he's a lock to be a second round pick. And if you look at his analytical profile, Sky Moore checks every single box. Like if you put him in our model, Sky Moore, I mean, (laughs) screams that he is a hidden gem in this draft class. Now I am concerned with Sky Moore for one reason. And that is if you go back to 2020 and you look at Dwayne Eskridge versus Sky Moore on a per game basis this season. Um, Dwayne Eskridge dominated Sky Moore. Like Sky Moore had slightly over half of the production that Dwayne Eskridge did. And Dwayne Eskridge clearly uh, did not work out his rookie season attached to one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I know he had a crowded depth chart. It is what it is. So with Sky Moore, I was hesitant to buy into him at the beginning of the off season. But I think based on the fact that he checks every box and we can make some excuses, 2020 was a small sample. Also, Dwayne Eskridge was significantly older than Sky Moore as well. But this is a player that showed dominance at Western Michigan. He went out there and broke out at an early age, declared early for the draft, ran a decent 40, and he looks like he's going to be drafted early in the NFL draft. Sky Moore is definitely an intriguing player here. I think you could easily see him fit alongside Terry McLaurin. Now going to our next option, a wide receiver that it's really hard to evaluate based on the offense that he's coming from. It's going to be John Mechie. Obviously with Mechie here, this is someone that had to compete for targets with Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddell, Devonta Smith at the very beginning of his career. So there is no chance he was ever getting on the field as a freshman, as a sophomore at Alabama. Now he ended up having to compete with Jamison Williams for targets his final season there. And if you look at the difference in production between Mechie and between Jamison Williams, not nearly as large as what a lot of people are going to assume. Now, the difference between the two is Williams has the elite speed, which NFL coordinators need so desperately to be able to draw that safety attention. So Mechie's definitely not going to go anywhere close to Williams and the actual NFL draft. And with the Jacksonville Jaguars, yeah, they have gone out there. They have invested into Christian Kirk. They invested in Evan Ingram. They have a couple pieces coming in. But very similarly, you're looking at this Jacksonville Jaguars team. They need to give Trevor Lawrence every asset he can have. They need to give him no excuses to fail this upcoming season. Now, of course, they're not putting the best pieces around him, but this coaching staff also has no allegiance to a wide receiver that I previously liked. I like LaVisca Chenault coming into the NFL, but at the end of the day, if we see Chenault fail his rookie year, his sophomore year, especially his sophomore year with Lawrence, when he had no target competition, I understand Urban Meyer was there. I think you probably just have to move on from him at this point. Now, a wide receiver that I 
hated at the beginning of the offseason because everybody was saying he was going to be a first round pick, which was laughable. Now, I think he's a good value. It's going to be David Bell. David Bell, definitely one of the big losers of the offseason. With David Bell, not going to be a player like George Pickens. Not going to be someone like Christian Watson that can give you that boundary play that can be that alpha X for you. But with David Bell instead, he can actually work underneath. He can be kind of a poor man's Juju Smith-Schuster. And what team needs that in the beginning of the third round? It's actually going to be the Chicago Bears. I could easily see David Bell fitting right alongside Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney operating in the deeper range of the overall field. And with David Bell just soaking up those targets underneath because... This team has a lot of targets to give. Right now, their top two options are the combination of Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. Justin Fields needs some weapons here. It kind of seems like this Bears team's just giving up on Justin Fields based on what they've done this offseason. But yeah, I think we can go David Bell, pick 71. In the pick 78, we are going to have Wondell Robinson with Robinson here. Another loser. I mean, he tested nice at the combine. The issue is just looks pretty small. I, I mean, overcoming that size will be something that is pretty, Probably hard to do to command a ton of volume in the NFL, but he doesn't have to command a ton of volume to be valuable for the Cleveland Browns offense. He can be that dynamic weapon when this team really doesn't have a lot of creativity. I mean, they have Amari Cooper to be the traditional wide receiver here, but to add a gadget player with some speed to an offense where Deshaun Watson's used to having that speedy wide receiver, I think it would make a lot of sense for them to go out there and add Robinson. Now, of course, thank you so much for being a part of the flock, watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please go down there, drop that like, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Go get our Dynasty Research, but go get our rankings. Go get everything on flockfantasy.com or sign up for Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code FLOCK and over there on Underdog Fantasy. You can get into some drafts with me on the live streams. You can go get into some drafts with some random people in the lobby, get into some drafts with your friends. But of course, thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. And hope we get to see you with the video later this week.